Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this Instagram live. Today it's going to be a different session since um, it's about all about World Rabies Day which is on 20th September and I find this very necessary to s use this platform and share about this and not to mention the Rabies, um, World Rabies Day theme that is share facts not fears and to do so we have our guest here Dr. Terence Scott. Um, so let me introduce um, today's guest. Okay. Dr. Terence Scott, he's the technical lead rabies at Glow Alliance for Rabies Control, known as the GARC. He's also working as a steering committee for Middle East, Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and North Africa Rabies Control Network, Miracle. And to keep the list going, Dr. Scott, who holds a doctoral degree in microbiology with specialization in vi uh, virology, is also the rabies epidemiological bulletin developer and administrator. The coordinator for Rabies World Day, this versatile personality also happens to be a very techy person given the fact that he also manages the GARC website. Isn't that amazing? So without further ado, let me welcome this amazing personality today. Dr. Dan Scott. Thank you so much, Dr. Scott, for doing this and um, welcome to the Instagram Live. Thank you so much and thank you very much for the, the invitation. I think this is a, a fantastic event and I appreciate the invitation. Um, and I just wanted to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who has joined us also. Thank you so much, Dr. Scott. Uh, for a minute, I thought it wouldn't be possible because we had like some difficulty there. But I think we're good to go. Yeah. So 28th September is almost here. And obviously you and your team are very occupied and tied up with all the preparation. So how is it going for you and your team nowadays? Yeah, uh, I think I think it's been excellent so far. Um, as you mentioned, we, we're working to the build up and um, to the celebration of World Rabies Day on September 28th. That's six days away. So it's it's coming very soon. Uh, but I think it's a really exciting time of the year. Um, it's a very important time of the year, especially to to share the message about rabies, to to advocate for the elimination of the disease, and to raise awareness. And I think having uh, events like like this, having an Instagram live session, having social media um, awareness and, and education messages, is the perfect way to to celebrate World Rabies Day. Yeah, great. And um, and again, thank you for so much for doing this with me. And by the way, to let you know that uh, the GARC is very much familiar in the uh, veterinary committee in in case of Nepal, uh, since we have been registering events on annual basis. But to those people who does not know about what's GARC and what are the activities, could you please shed some light on that as well? Of course. So GARC, or the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, is an international charity that is dedicated to rabies control and elimination. Uh, we were founded in 2006 and we started World Rabies Day along with some partners in 2007. Um, so uh, the September 28th was chosen as the, the date for World Rabies Day because that is in commemoration of the death of Louis Pasteur who I'm sure most of us hopefully know, uh, was the, the person who created the first vaccine against rabies and successfully vaccinated a young boy named Joseph Meister in 1885. Um, GARC has been involved in um, international advocacy, awareness, in education, and in the development of tools specifically to support rabies elimination at the country level, so at the national level but also looking at communities and people on the ground at the local level and supporting elimination in that way. Um, we've been part of the development of the global strategic plan uh, mm -hmm. and the setting of the, the goal for zero by 30. So I'm, I'm sure we'll hear and chat more about that soon. Um, but we've been instrumental in the progress and the development of the, the plan towards rabies elimination at the international level. Well, wow. that's a good uh, introduction for those who do not know about GARC. Well, and with every year, we have different themes. And this year's themes happens to be rabies, share facts, not fears. So what exactly is the theme telling us about? 
Well, this year, this year, the theme was specifically chosen in light of what is happening currently, the global situation. So if we think about the, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we, we've seen a lot of um, issues arising around this in terms of myths about the disease, in terms of misinformation. So people spreading false rumors about the disease, um, about vaccine hesitancy in terms of people who don't want to get vaccinated. They believe that, um, you know, the vaccines are bad for you and will cause some, some other diseases, which we know is not true. This is scientifically inaccurate. So we thought rabies has experienced the same issues and we've seen the same things year after year um, with rabies also. And so we thought because of this huge public awareness about COVID, we thought to link the, the theme for this year to, to that. So the theme is all about dismissing those myths about rabies, getting rid of that and stopping that fake news that has been spread about this disease, about addressing vaccine hesitancy. So ensuring that people want to get their dogs primarily vaccinated against rabies, but also themselves if they are exposed. And the fear aspect really comes in in terms of fear being a symptom of the disease. So if we think about the horrific symptoms of, of rabies, um, that fear of water, hydrophobia, the fear of air, aerophobia, um, those are, are all addressed in this theme. But also then um, the fear of, that this misinformation causes, that these myths and, and untruths about rabies cause in the community. Um, so we want to try and address that with facts and with scientific data. I think that was very appropriate that you relate it with the COVID situation. And um, like if you, if you talk about Nepal, people are still hesitating here to get the vaccine as well. And yeah, and hopefully they will get them someday. So uh, when we talk about rabies, we frequently come across this very popular campaign that is the End Rabies uh, Now campaign. Uh, what exactly is the End Rabies Now campaign and how did it all start? So the End Rabies Now campaign was initially a collaborative campaign with um, all the international communities. So specifically the major international players in, in rabies elimination. Um, and it was a campaign coordinated by GARC. Um, so we set up this campaign to try to set the global targets of zero by 30. So the, the goal of zero human rabies deaths from dog transmitted rabies by 2030 was initially proposed and advocated for in 2015 with the launch of the End Rabies Now campaign. And after the success of that campaign in the December 2015, um, there was the Global Rabies Conference and that is where the goal of 2030 was then set. So as a, as a follow on from the campaign, the su success of that campaign led to the, the, the goal of zero by 30, which I'm sure most of us are familiar with now. And what we've done is after the, su the success of that campaign, um, GARC has now re-envisioned the campaign to now move away from that target because we have achieved success in that. And we've now moved towards focusing on the community and bringing different local partners together. So now the End Rabies campaign is focused on bringing local organizations, groups, and champions from around the world together um, so that we can coordinate actions better. So there's a lot of focus from the international community on national governments because the, the global strategic plan is focused on a country-centric approach, which is 100% correct. But we also recognize that there are other players like your group, student groups, uh, local NGOs, um, just interested people on the ground working in animal shelters or people educating others about rabies. We want to bring all those people together who are doing this fantastic work and help them to coordinate better, but also in help them to, to coordinate better with the governments um, so that there can be a consolidated approach so that we all work together towards this common goal of rabies elimination. Wow. So you mentioned about this entire thing that started in 2015. And if we see the record, uh, it's, um, it also says that like 59,000 people die due to rabies every year. 
and uh, it's very daunting to see that 40% of them are from the Asia and African countries only. So now that we have come across like six years down the lane, um, what is the scenario of rabies now, especially in terms of these two continents, um, Asia and Africa? So that that's an excellent question, and from the 2015 study where this this figure of 59,000 arose, that was based on on modeling. Um, so it looked at the, the situation and looked at the data that was available and modeled this for the rest of the, the, the world. Um, unfortunately, and the challenge that, that we still see today is that there is a lack of surveillance data available. Um, and this means that we don't have better or in essence, true figures of the rabies burden in countries because surveillance is lacking. And this is a critical aspect of the global strategic plan and also GARC's work is to, uh, is to address this challenge and try to improve surveillance in countries so that we have better figures, so that we have accurate estimates of the, the deaths of, um, caused by rabies, of the number of animals affected, of the intervention so that we can show impact and progress. Um, the, so the, the Global Alliance and its partners have been working to improve laboratory capacity. And as you mentioned in the introductions, we've developed tools like the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, which is a system to, designed to improve the collection and analysis of data so that we can have those accurate estimates. So we still rely on those figures of um, 59,000 human deaths every year um, because they are the best estimates that we have, and they are good estimates. Um, but the problem is we need to improve our surveillance so that we can have more accurate estimates of that and, and continue to advocate for the elimination of the disease. Because I think without good data, we can't show to stakeholders, to politicians, to, you know, the people who are investing in rabies, we can't show them progress and we can't show them the, the issue about the disease without good data. Wow. So it's, it's still surprising to me and to, I think to our audience to know that we still lack uh, the surveillance group. Um, so you also mentioned about uh, this, I think, not exactly, but the, um, the different phases that we are in. Um, for now, I think we are in the scaling up phase and uh, we are all done with the starting phase. And if we talk and if we look back, how was it then and what do you think were the biggest challenges for you guys to pull it up? Well, I think in terms of the global strategic plan, um, the, the phased approach is, is obviously necessary because um, there are only limited resources available. Um, the, the rabies community is, is relatively small if we consider that it is a, a disease that affects more than 150 countries around the world. So we need to stagger the, the global strategic plan so that it's, it can really focus on show, showcasing success in specific areas. Um, and I think in terms of the development of tools, in the terms of the development of national strategic plans, um, in a lot of the endemic countries, this has been a great success. So we've seen through the use of the tool, like the stepwise approach towards rabies elimination or the SARE tool, mm -hmm. um, we've seen many countries assessing their situation of rabies, which they've never done before, and also developing a national strategic plan. So developing a clear plan with a work plan so that they know exactly which stakeholders are are responsible for which activities to, so that we can work together and achieve rabies elimination in a progressive and coordinated manner. So I think it's been an excellent success seeing the implementation and the development of these plans. And now we're moving to um, the, the scaling up aspect. So moving from those local level uh, projects, um, maybe on a smaller scale, and now scaling them up to the national level and of course, continuing to roll out the different tools and resources to, to other rabies and endemic countries. Mm -hmm. So now that you uh, mentioned that we are in the scaling up phase, and um, in the start of phase, we had a little bit of problem uh, starting up since it's, it was a very new. Now that we have already, um, you know, let's say warmed up, uh, what do you think will be the next um, biggest challenges for the uh, 
this particular thing to reach the responsive thing? Well, I think always the case is, is advocacy and awareness and education. Um, so without advocacy, as I mentioned in terms of the surveillance when we were talking about that, yeah. advocacy is key to show that the stakeholders and the relative, um, the, the people who are involved, the donors um, and the, the decision makers, to show them that rabies is a problem so that they can then prioritize the disease. So the reason is we need the government of countries where rabies is endemic to take control and to drive the rabies elimination strategy. And we've seen this through examples with rinderpest, which has been eliminated, and smallpox, which has also been eliminated globally. The only way to eliminate a disease is if countries take ownership of their own elimination strategies. So you can't have international communities or, um, you know, other groups coming in to, to do the work for them because that's not sustainable. So the main focus will be to get that government commitment. And as I mentioned, I think there has been fantastic progress with that. Firstly, through World Rabies Day and, and advocacy events such as this, um, but also through the development of these plans with the, the SARE tool. So I think there has been great progress with that. We are seeing better government engagement and we need to main, maintain that engagement and ensure that they stay involved in a sustainable manner. I completely agree with you with, on that, Dr. Scott, that uh, it has to be the own local government that has to get involved um, instead because it's more sustainable that way. And... Uh, we already talk about what's happening around the world and the current scenario of rabies as well. So let's uh, talk and a bit about the rules and involvement of people. Uh, you also mentioned about uh, the guard being the United Against Rabies collaborators. So um, I'm very keen to know that what steps are um, guard been taking to reach this mission so far. So I think in terms of um, the United Against Rabies uh, collaboration and the United Against Rabies Forum, um, that has been de developed um, to, to address the need for, for tools and resources and for the scaling up progress in, uh, process in the, the Global Strategic Plan. So GARC's got a, a very involved role in this. Um, as I mentioned, we're part of the development of the Global Strategic Plan itself. And now in terms of the United Against Rabies Forum, uh, we're actively participating and in many cases leading some of the, the work streams where the global community, again, is coming together to, to develop tools, to address specific needs um, where we have identified that there are gaps to, um, to, to rabies elimination activities. So identifying needs exactly how we can best help as an international community support governments so that we have a sustainable rabies control and elimination plan in each of those areas. Um, so we're actively involved in um, various of the, the work streams and activities and there is a webinar, a series of webinars for the United Against Rabies Forum coming up on the 27th of September, the 4th of October and the 11th of October. Um, there are three webinars, so I'd encourage everyone here to, to join those webinars and you can see the progress of, of, of that forum and this group of international experts, um, both representatives from national governments and from academia, international organizations and, and other groups all coming together to, to address these issues. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Scott, for that information as well. And um, I'm also very curious to know about what roles can like veterinarians or veterinary students play specifically to reach this mission very, uh, so that we can you know reach this mission easily. Well, I think as I mentioned right in the beginning, I think what you're doing here is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, it's 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 a great way to to raise awareness, to educate others. Um, to reach new people um, about and teach them and tell them about rabies, to educate them about the disease and make them aware of it. Um, so whether you are in a rabies endemic country like yourself in Nepal, um, or whether you're in a rabies free country, doing activities like this, raising awareness through social media um, and through just 
chatting with your friends, doing education courses online. Um, you know, these are great ways. You, you, you laugh and smile, but, you know, we, the more people we reach, um, the easier our, our lives will become. Um, of course, you know, in terms of veterinarians themselves, you know, you're trained, you're, you have the capacity to vaccinate animals. And we know that vaccination is the only means to, to eliminate dog-mediated rabies. It's the most practical and feasible means to do it. And so if you are able to, if you have the resources and the support to do so, we would encourage you to, to vaccinate as many dogs as possible um, to, to help us in achieving this goal. So, of course, we encourage you to do that in a way that is aligned with the government's strategy um, so we, we always encourage that coordination. Um, but to just to reach your local community, to ensure that your dogs, your, your clients' um, dogs, if you're a private practitioner and your community's dogs are vaccinated against rabies, already makes a huge contribution to keeping those, those communities safe. So um, I, I would also like to take this opportunity to discuss you on, a, let's say, an issue here in Nepal. So in, since past like two to three years, Nepal has encountered like lots of uh, animal cruelty cases. And um, one of the main reasons for this has been due to rabies. That's what people are calling. But it only has been reported but not been proven. So what do we think or what strategic plans can we take from here? Or what can be done to do um, to do fight against this kind of issues? Well, I think this ties in exactly with the World Rabies Day theme again is the facts, not fear. So a lot of people fear um, dogs in the communities. If there are free roaming dogs in the communities, they may automatically think that these are vicious, um, you know, dogs that, that are aggressive and will attack you and that all dogs have rabies. We know that is not true. Um, that That is not the case. So, again, educating the community, reaching out to them with um, awareness materials, this is critical to, to preventing this cruelty. And of course, um, having vaccination programs to, to, and, and educating the community and making them aware of these vaccination programs is key so that you can tell the community that those dogs that you see roaming the streets, they don't have rabies because we vaccinated them. They are safe. Um, looking at responsible dog ownership in terms of um, ensuring that your animals are confined and well cared for, that they receive the vaccinations, that they receive other treatments, um, you know, um, so that they get treated for ticks and canine distemper and parvovirus and, you know, all the other things that they need to be treated for. And having that responsible dog ownership element to ensure that their dogs don't roam the streets, that they don't um, cause bite incidents with, with other people is also critical. So I think in terms of preventing this undue aggression towards animals in the community, education is, is always key. And of course, being out there and vaccinating and making the community aware of this too. Wow. Um, well, we are almost to the, um, the conclusion part. I am... Um, I think it, it was very short as well. So to any of the uh, people who are watching us, if you have any question to Dr. Terence, well, please feel free to write in the comment box. Um, so we talk about all these challenges that we face during this mission. And uh, also let's talk about hope. Um, how hopeful are you and your team regarding this entire mission in, in Rabies Now campaign? Oh, I mean, there, there's always hope. Um, I think we, we always have a positive output, out, outlook on, on, on the situation. Um, and we have to remain positive because if we don't set these goals, if we don't strive towards a, a set goal and towards rabies elimination, we're never going to achieve it. So if we don't have hope, um, then people won't continue. People won't believe you if you don't believe yourself. So you have to believe in yourself. You have to have that hope so that we can be sure that we can then spread that, 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 that hope and that, that advocacy and make sure that we can achieve this goal. It is possible. We know it's possible. It's been done in, in countries all around the world. Um, rabies has, dog rabies has been eliminated. Um, we've seen recently in Mexico in, in 2019, the WHO officially declared them free from dog rabies. Um, dog-mediated human rabies, uh, my apologies. 
And so we know it is possible. We know it can be done. We have the tools. We have the resources. Um, we just need that commitment and that awareness. So I'm entirely hopeful, and uh, I believe we, you know, this this isn't a fruitless mission. We can do it. Um, we just need that engagement and seeing the people online here spreading the awareness. Um, you know, being educated and understanding more about the disease. That's definitely the first step to getting there. So. That was wonderful, Dr. Scott. Um, and I think this will be my last question for this entire session. And um, since this year's theme, like we mentioned before, is share facts, not fears, what do you think we can do to stick to the this particular theme? Because a lot of times, even yesterday when I shared this, all this you know, uh, information about this event, I tend to focus more on the uh, fearful uh, facts that was causing them the uh, more kind of, you know, having this subconsciously furious thing. But what do you think we can uh, address more so that we can stick to this particular thing more specifically? Well, um, I think the, the GARC has created social media toolkits where you can share messages um, about rabies, dispelling these, these, fact, uh, these, these myths and misconceptions about rabies, sharing facts about rabies. Um, as I mentioned, having social media awareness campaigns is, is a great way to reach out educating your community. Um, we have free online education courses uh, where you can receive a certificate at the end. Um, just learning about rabies and then understanding more about it is, is a great way to do that. Um, but you, I mean, people listening mustn't be um, scared about um, doing other activities that that's, they may not see as directly addressing the, the, the theme for this year. Um, we know that vaccination is critical. So if you're interested in going out and vaccinating dogs in your community, please do it, obviously within the, the government guidelines. Um, but, you know, please, please do that because that is still addressing the need. Um, the, the theme every year changes, but the goal is always the same. The goal is to eliminate rabies. So whatever you do to eliminate rabies is definitely and should definitely be celebrated as a World Rabies Day event and shouldn't stop on World Rabies Day. It should carry on the rest of the year too. Wow, that was wonderful, Dr. Scott. And I think we also have a question in the chat box if you are, if you would like to address that. Uh, it's from Paris Emerson. She's a wonderful friend of mine. And she says, a lot of innovative techniques are being developed, especially with digital technology. Are there any examples of positive studies and tools that work? Yes, definitely. Um, in terms of digital technology, we, we mentioned earlier the, the importance of surveillance. Um, I mentioned tools like the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, um, and there are various other tools available out there. There are mobile phone applications that have been successful all around the world in terms of tracking dog vaccinations and showing the impact of dog vaccinations. Um, the digital technologies, um, if you consider online education courses and platforms like that. I know that, as I mentioned also, there's the GARC education platform, but there are many other online platforms for, for education purposes. Um, if we look at digital technologies like we're doing right now, um, we're in two different countries across the world, um, different time zones, and yet we, we're communicating with one another, raising awareness about the disease and educating people about the disease. So I think all of these are fantastic um, examples of um, positive uh, effects of, of digital technology. And the more that we use this, um, the more that it, become, it can become normal and ingrained in rabies control and elimination. Um, um, I'm happy if you if you contact me. You can um, I can provide you for, with scientific publications if you're interested in things like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's up to the people in the audience to to then reach out for a bit more information on that. Uh, and to audience who need more information on Dr. Dennis Scott, you can directly reach him, or you can also ask me, and I can give you some information on him or maybe a LinkedIn profile would do work. <laughs> um, so that was it. Thank you so much, Dr. Scott. Um, I know that you have a very short time on this as well. So I was thrilled that you accepted and responded to my email. Um, when I saw your uh, email and the letter that they said, Dr. Terrence, I was like, 
blown off and um, this entire like uh, session has been very informative and insightful and thank you so much for doing this with me i am very honored and pleasure to have you uh, thank you so much it's my absolute pleasure and um we we always uh honored to to be invited to these different events to be able to speak with people around the world about about rabies and to share our our joint passion and our joint mission towards the elimination of rabies so thank you so much for the invitation thank you for registering your world rabies day events um and we look forward to seeing more from from yourself and from the poll um in in terms of rabies elimination so i really appreciate the time that you've taken to to set this up and i'd like to thank all the listeners who who joined us too um thank you for for being interested and we hope to see your continued engagement so i think on that note we can say goodbye and thank you dr scott it was always a pleasure having you and with that i think we can end this live session so thank yeah. you so much bye 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 dr scott yeah so that was dr scott technical lead of rabies from global alliance for rabies control and also the steering committee for middle east eastern europe central asia and north africa rabies control network known as the mrakan thank you everyone for joining in and i hope the session was informative and fruitful so let's share this um, world rabies day and share this more facts than fears and do our own parts thank you so much see you on our next episode bye <laughs>